the 6.8 SPC versus 5.56 NATO. Undoubtedly, the AR-15 is America's rifle, but which cartridge is best for you? Dave and I are going to talk about it on this episode of Ammunition Guides with Ammo.com. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Now, Chris, uh, I, I see you brought a little uh, little prop to the podcast today. I did, yeah. I have my AR-15 with me here, and uh, we are talking about some real popular AR-15 cartridges. Of course, the 5.56 NATO, the grandfather of them all, right? But uh, there were some questions about its efficacy, and so we're going to talk about the 6.8 SPC. But uh, hey, if you need either of these rounds, make sure you click that link down below in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon from ammo.com. But yeah, Dave, these are two battle cartridges. One of them has been in quite a few conflicts. The other one, not so much. Yeah, we got to preface by by saying 5.56 is, is hardly not efficacious for oh, yeah. uh, combat and home defense. This round has kind of proven that it's worth its salt, so to speak. Uh, but the 6.0 SPC for all its virtues it looks like it kind of missed the mark due to remington bungling a little bit no you're absolutely right and uh that's something i want to talk about you know right off the start here because when you get yourself a new barrel for a 6.8 spc you'll often notice that it's roll mark 6.8 SPC2. And you're like, well, what is that? Because I go to ammo.com to get all my ammo, which is what you should be doing. And there is no 6.8 SPC2 for sale. And the reason for that is because Remington kind of botched the release of the 6.8 SPC. They initially had it put in a barrel with a 1 in 10 twist, which means one rotation for every 10 inches of barrel length. And they also didn't quite have enough free bore on the cartridge, in the chamber rather, and what happened was their rounds were slightly overpressured by about two to 300 PSI over max. So instead of remedying the chamber designs, Remington thought, hey, let's just cut some powder out of the chamber. That sounds like a good idea. Let's make it a little lighter so it's under pressure. Well, they did that and then, you know, the ballistic performance kind of suffered and the military was like, eh, see you later. Now, Remington fixed the issue. The problem is there was so much euphoria surrounding the round before its release that there were manufacturers who put rifles out with the original 6.8 SBC chamber design. Now, if you fire you know, full power rounds in that chamber, there is the potential that you could have a pressure problem which could damage the shooter and the rifle, which is not good. So a lot of factory ammunition is not going to be loaded to 6.8 SPC2 specs. Uh, and it's unfortunate because it's a very good round all in all. The 6.8 SPC is a really good option, especially for up close and personal work. This 6.8 SPC2 has about a good 30% more kinetic energy at the muzzle than your standard 5.56 NATO round. Now, that would largely be a product of its, uh, its bullet, which is about 0.05 inches wider in diameter. Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, the 5.56 NATO shoots a zero or yeah 0 0.224 inch diameter bullet, a 22 caliber rifle bullet, whereas your 6.8 SPC is firing a 0 0.277 diameter bullet, and it is a bit wider uh, and it's also a bit heavier. And by a bit heavier, I mean about double the weight. Uh, your typical SPC is going to run like 115, 120 grains, whereas your NATO ammunition is typically either 55 or 62 grains. So up here at 120 grains, um, obviously this isn't a 30 caliber bullet, but we're talking about 8K47 bullet weights kind of. You're absolutely right, Dave. And I think that's really what they were going for initially with all the CQB, you know, the going door to door, clearing buildings, things like that. That, you know, intermediate, larger caliber bullet that's got a bit more weight to it can do a lot of damage, especially when you're up close and personal. And that's, in my opinion, what they were trying to replicate. Now, there are issues putting a 762 by 39 into an AR-15. There have been companies who've successfully done it, but I think honestly there was a bit of negative feelings towards the round in the military, and they wanted to make something that was their own. Yeah, I could imagine the U.S. Armed Forces is in love with the 762 39, given how yeah. often it's been pointed at their own members. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, the, the nice thing about the 6.8 SBC2 is it gives you that added kinetic energy. You don't sacrifice a whole lot of muzzle velocity. You do lose some, uh, but it really is an up close and personal round, whereas your 5.56 NATO has got a lot flatter trajectory and can easily reach out to 500 yards. 
How how much of a muzzle velocity dip are we speaking about with the 6.8 SPC? Your typical M855 62 grain NATO bullet is going to be leaving the muzzle around 3,000 feet per second, which I believe is NATO spec, uh, with about 12 to 1,300 foot-pounds of energy compared to your 120 grain 6.8 SPC 2 round, which is leaving at about 2,500 feet per second, so about 500 less, but it's packing 1,600 foot-pounds of energy. So that really, really is similar to 76239. Uh, Almost exactly the same. Muzzle data. But the thing is, you look at the trajectories, and that's really where the 556 five, separates itself. Your typical 556 five, NATO round is going to have about 55 inches of bullet drop at 500 yards, whereas we're looking at an almost 80 inches of bullet drop for the 6.8 SBC at that range. Now, we must note that your average home defense. Uh, situation doesn't really require covering five football fields. If I'm going to pick one for home defense, it's undoubtedly the 6.8 because you you have that added muzzle energy, excuse me, but uh, you know, you've got a little less velocity, so hopefully a little less potential there for over penetration, but uh, both of these rounds going to penetrate pretty well through sheetrock. Yeah. And when you talk about over penetration, wouldn't the round with the heavier bullet necessarily risk over penetration more? You know, the, the 6.0 SBC's muzzle energy is about about a third more powerful. Shouldn't that carry the bullet right through the threat? Still, I'm going to go with the 6.8 on this one. I want to have that bigger bullet. I want to stop the threat as quickly as possible. Uh, I think it's important to know what your backstop is, of course, in any self-defense situation. But uh, the 6.8 SBC has really been making rounds in the hunting areas as well. Yeah, I know the 5.56 and 2.23 are, depends on who you ask, but generally for whitetail you're looking at 150 yards maximum effective range. So you're saying a 6.8 SBC will, will give you that much more room to work with. Your 6.8 SBC is easily going to get you out to 200 yards uh, for that energy. It, honestly, a little bit fast or further, rather. You could probably stretch it out to about 250. Your 5.56, 5, now, you're not going to be shooting full metal jacket 5.56 5, at a deer. That's that's bad hunting. You need to be using a, you know, a soft point, but you're just going to get more range out of the 6.8 SPC because you've got more energy to start with and it holds on to it just a little bit better than the 5.56. Right off the bat, there's that dual purpose rifle that we all know and love. Uh, obviously, if, if you're going to buy one rifle and you'd like to hunt with it and you'd like to defend your home with it, you're saying that the 6.8 SPC wins the day on that. But that brings us to the 6.8 SPC's main shortcoming. Is mm-hmm. uh, what could we compare to the availability of 5.56 and 223? Probably yeah. nothing. Whereas 6 point SPC, um, I'm going to go ahead and declare it still a niche cartridge. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, I know that it's gaining some popularity, but again, with the adoption of the 277 Fury, if that moves forward, uh, I think everybody's kind of waiting to see if that happens or not. But yeah, the 6.8 SBC really just had failure to launch is really what it comes down to. And that's really hurt its acceptance and its availability. Like you said, 5.56, you can find it everywhere. We have tons of it available. You can even buy it in bulk here on ammo.com. And you can get it for like 60 cents a round or less as of the date of this recording. Uh, for 6.8 SPC, you aren't going to find it for any less than $1.50 a round. And it's not easy to find. So beautifully, you've got you know what we could tentatively declare to be the better cartridge. is also the much harder to find cartridge. Leads me kind of in my next point. Reloading is a really nice thing to be able to do with the 6.8 SBC. Uh, you've got a lot of different, uh, you know, bullets available to you. Of course, 0.277, fairly popular with the 270 Winchester crowd, and uh, it, lots of powders available, similar to what you'd use for a 5.56. So it definitely helps your ammo availability if you like to hand load like I do. But you know, if you need brass cases, uh, it's always good just to save your cases that you shoot from your factory ammo, which is how I got started. Uh, into hand loading. And, uh, you know, you can definitely get plenty of that here on ammo.com. So gosh, Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to recommend first time rifle buyers to rush out and get the 6.8 SPC just because I, I want them to spend a lot of quality time with their rifles at the range. So is, is the 6.8 SPC recommended solely as an upgrade for, for people who've already familiarized themselves with the 5.56 and want a little extra power? You know, it's a great question. I think it gives you a little bit, the 6.8 rather gives you a little extra flexibility as far as, you know, kinetic energy and having that extra stopping power, our favorite word here on the on the show. But yeah, the 5.56 is probably going to be my recommendation. It's tried, it's true. You know how it's going to perform and you can find it everywhere. It's less expensive. Now, 
One thing you can do if you really want to have a 6.8 SPC is just to purchase the upper. You can always buy a 6.8 SPC upper and then just swap out your upper receiver on your AR-15 and you've got a brand new rifle. Just make sure you've got your magazines you know, segregated so you're not mixing up your 5.56 and your 6.8 ammo and you should be good to go. All right. Well, everyone go buy it. Exactly. And, uh, you know, guys, if you again, if you need extra ammo, if you're running low, especially when times get tough, make sure you come to ammo.com. You're going to find the best prices. Click that like and subscribe button and we'll see you out on the range.